Hey everyone, Tyson the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Print Storage here. Today we're taking a look at the Sunblaze Pearl 2024 Crosstrek Wheel. I actually think this is my favorite color on the wilderness, the Sunblaze, that it's kind of a burnt orange color. And this is the newest trim level in the 2024 Crosstrek lineup, most off-road oriented. It's got an exclusive front and rear end. You've got increased ground clearance. Visually, right off the bat, thing that you notice most is the big matte black hood decal decal sticker, whatever you want to call it. And it is the widest on all of the Wilderness models. They're a little thinner on the Forester and the Outback. So this is matte black and is designed to reduce sun glare onto the driver's windshield. So it is very practical. It actually makes a big difference. I was shocked. Front end is different. You've got an exclusive front bumper, an exclusive grill. You've got your anodized tow hook recovery locations covered with that copper six led gatling gun style fog lights and that cladding all along the bottom to protect it when you're going off the beaten path and they put a lot of cladding on it because well let's be honest people who buy these are probably going to go off the beaten path and it helps protect the body protect the paint against rock chips mud sticks debris smaller led steering responsive headlights on all of the 24s and they all come with high beam assist which is phenomenal for highway driving got a very very good approach angle that bumper cutout really makes that approach angle pop exclusive 17 inch matte black alloy wheels and you get yokohama geolander at tires so it's not the most aggressive all-terrain out there it's a good mix of off-road performance and comfort and these are actually snowflake rated so you are legal on all roads in British Columbia. They're not as good as a dedicated winter tire, but you are legal. And of course, underneath the front bumper, skid plate. Now I know some people online have been giving Subaru grief over these, or this front skid plate. I shouldn't say these skid plates, just the single skid plate it comes with, but I've seen it take a pretty good impact and it held up. So it's, it's better than people make it out to be. It's not full coverage like some of them out there, but it is functional. So you've got the larger, more aggressive fender flares on the side. You've got your wilderness badge. You have that additional cladding along the bottom. You can actually buy that cladding as an accessory for the other cross tracks. I'll give you that side profile. It's a very sporty side profile. You can really see that extra ground clearance that the cross track wilderness has over the standard 8.7 inches. Up top, we have the anodized copper on the front and rear of the crossbars, not in the middle support, but it is a little bit <laughs> more than the others. Tilt and slide sunroof, got a black shark fin antenna, and that rear three quarter view, my favorite view of the new cross track. Look at that sun hit that, that's a gorgeous color. I understand it's not for everyone. I'm in love with it. We've got that exclusive rear end on the wilderness. And so when I talk about the rear end, I mean, really, I'm talking about the bumper. So you've got better departure angles on the corners, integrated reflectors. You've got backup sensors in the rear bumper. That's those little circles. They'll apply the brakes. If things are going to hit something in reverse between speeds of one and 15 kilometers an hour. We've got the anodized copper tow hooks, Subaru in the rear bumper, and then another tow hook cover. Now I'm not personally a fan of the fact it says Subaru on the back. I think that's copying every other brand out there, but it does look good in general. Subaru Wilderness, Crosstrack in black, to open the rear hatch right between these two stars at the bottom, or rubber switch, press and lift right there, backup camera, and there's a lot of storage room in the rear of the Crosstrack, far more than people expect. Wilderness gets the Wilderness branded cargo tray textured really nice lip on it to help contain any spills or liquids that may get loose in the back. Privacy cover with integrated handle. Hides everything from the top of the seats down. Now this is easy to remove. It's just a telescopic piece and all you need to do, I just grab it and I pull and it's easy to remove. Now you cannot store that, you can store it underneath here, but you're not going to be sitting flat. It's not, it's not like the Forester or the Outback. Underneath here, we have spare tire, we've got our eye bolt, we've got our jack. Hopefully none of you ever need to use that. We've got our grocery bag hooks on either side along with that halogen cargo light. Cup holders for tailgating in each corner. And up top here, we do have an LED cargo light. Now that will shut off when I close the hatch or I can just have it shut off. 
No power gates on any of the cross tracks. And it's running, so that's why it's beeping, because I just closed it. Now, second row room is deceptively large. There's great headroom and great legroom in the back of the cross track. Now, this is the StarTex all weather soft touch seating material. This is a new material, a little bit different with this hexagonal pattern, and it's almost like there's fabric cut out. So I expect this is going to breathe a little bit better than the other StarTex, but I have a feeling that it's going to clean up just as easily. Fold down armrest with integrated cup holders. We've got two USB ports on the back of the center console for charging, and we have a map back pocket on the rear of the front passenger seat. High wall rubber mats, come standard equipment on the wilderness. We've got this grippy step. This is designed to be textured so that you can use this as a step if you're loading something on the roof rails. A lot better than standing on the tire because the tire sits inside the fender. And if I'm standing on the tire and I go straight up, I'm at the back of the crossbars. I'll be leaning this way to put anything on a rack or in a carrier. In the door, soft touch armrest, hard touch door panel, a little bit of storage with a bottle holder, power window should you need it child locks now it is a proximity key so i can lock it so long as this key is on my person within 46 inches i can't do it while it's running unfortunately but i would normally just touch those lines it would beep and lock and then to unlock it i wait a second hand in the handle and it unlocks up front door panel looks very much the same except this is soft touch this is leather soft touch armrest anodized copper stitching Window lock with your four power windows and power mirror. A little bit more storage than the rear door card. Same size bottle holder. Harman Kardon audio system. Phenomenal audio system. I'm a big fan of the Harman Kardon. I think it's a great system. Power driver seat, including lumbar support. And you get the same StarTech soft touch all weather upholstery up front as you do in the second row, just with Wilderness on the headrest. Now, these seats, Subaru worked really, really hard on these. They're actually designed to reduce your pelvis from vibrating over longer trips, which reduces fatigue in the long run, which is quite nice. We've got our scroll wheel for the brightness of our gauges, a couple blank switches that you would find all filled with buttons on previous gen cross tracks. Great place if you're gonna stick light bars, put switches there, got a fuse box, and then steering wheel adjustment off the column. So it's both tilt, and telescopic, so you can adjust it to drivers of varying hearts, heights, arm, and leg lengths. So here I am on the inside of the 2024 Crosstrek Wilderness. Steering wheel, anodized copper centerpiece, anodized copper stitching around the steering wheel. On the left-hand side of the steering wheel, we have our Bluetooth and audio control, so you can make and take calls, hang up, decline, issue voice commands. We can control the volume of the calls and the music, switch between presets, switch from AM to FM to Bluetooth to USB, etc. This little toggle here will change our small little center display up top there. Distance to empty, time, radio station, time it shut off at intersections. Lots of information depending on what you want to look at. And then behind that, we have our headlight controls and it defaults to auto, which is nice. Fog light controls. We have our paddles, downshift and upshift for manually selecting our own gears. On the right hand side, we have our adaptive cruise and our lane centering. Now, both of these systems use these three cameras the two color stereo eyesight cameras and that new wide angle mono camera which increases the field of view from left to right and actually speaking of field of view you've got absolutely fantastic visibility out of the cross track great for a vehicle of its size so when i turn on the adaptive cruise i get an image of the cross track there and you'll notice there's four bars ahead of it that is the follow distance behind the vehicle ahead of you that you follow at if you catch up while using a cruise so Four bars, 100 kilometers an hour. You're going to follow it roughly 150 to 180 feet. I can decrease the follow distance by pressing down here. And I can tailgate someone. And it will still slow us down if we catch up, but you're just going to follow closer. Lane centering. Little image of the steering wheel. We've got those two gray lines. If the cameras can see the road lines, they'll illuminate white on whichever side it can see. And at that point, It'll help give you gentle steering input, take you through corners. It is not hands-free driving. Keep your hands on the wheel. Do not rely on it. All of Subaru Safety Tech are assists or enhancements for you as a driver, not a replacement for you. We've got intelligent and sport drive mode. So intelligence for everyday driving. Sport, you go faster sooner. And when I press S, you can see that little yellow line gets a little bit more aggressive than the blue line there. And then, of course, 
heated steering wheel. Off, on, little faint orange light means it's on. It does not heat between the seams, just kind of where you're supposed to keep your hands, and it gets absolutely cooking. It's fantastic. Great for colder days. 11.6 inch touchscreen, and they've broken it into three portions. So top portion here, we've got access to dual function X mode. So in the wilderness, you get a special set of X mode parameters, and it works much, much different. I shouldn't say much differently, but it works better, more off-road enhanced than your standard one. So you, it's like four by four low. You have to be going under 40 kilometers an hour to engage, to use it under 20 kilometers an hour to engage it. And you simply press snow dirt. Snow dirt comes up, little rough terrain icon, downhill descent control icon there. Deep snow and mud, deep snow and mud. Also disables traction control. That allows you to spin your wheels to chew you out of that situation. Normal. If I exceed 40 kilometers an hour, it's going to go back to normal anyways. I've got weather, which is part of the three month satellite radio trial. Gauges. Now I can change these. I just sim simply click on them, choose the one that I want to change and adjust it. There you go. Wednesday the 6th. And then I have what I'm listening to. Now that will tell you what, if you're listening to something on the radio, the station, it'll tell you if you're listening to something on Bluetooth, as long as you have a title in it and an artist in it, it'll tell you that. The center portion of the screen, we have things like radio, media, and phone. Radio is radio. Media would be Bluetooth, aux, USB. Phone allows you to hook your phone up to Bluetooth. Under apps, we have wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. You'll gain access to the My Subaru app. Once the vehicle's registered in your names, you get set up emails for that. You get a three-year trial to that, including a remote start from your phone, my Subaru, car info, driving statistics. You can set maintenance reminders. You can turn off the display if you don't like it. Valet mode, auto vehicle hold, turn off traction control. You can add additional shortcuts if you want. We do still have a volume and tuning knob physically there on the left and right. Below that, we have our home button. You can deactivate the auto start stop. Pressing the little vehicle brings us vehicle control, driving assistance, and more settings. So driving assistance, you can change. You can turn off blind spot detection or cross traffic. And blind spot looks like so on the corresponding side when someone's in your blind spot. Doesn't eliminate shoulder checking, but with that great visibility I demoed earlier, it shouldn't be an issue. We've got the ability to hook up to five phones in total. You can set driver profiles. And then we have our climate controls. So we do still have physical buttons on either side, and it goes up in or down in 0.5 degree increments. Really easy. Just front defrost, we've got our heated mirrors, back window, and area of the windshield where the wipers sit. Or I can simply press, brings up our climate control screen. I can click, I can drag, I can choose where I want my airflow. If I want AC, max AC, recirc on, I can sync it back to just driver controlled. Got this big fan strength button, hard to miss. It's fantastic. I can make it just focus on the front of the cabin, or I can have it direct airflow throughout the cabin. So depending who's with you or what's with you, what you have in the back, you can accommodate them as well. Now, below that, we have our 10 watt wireless charger. Your phone is gonna get warm while using that. That is normal. If you don't want it charging, turn it off. Above those, we have two USBs and an aux port. It is an automatic CVT with manual mode. That's where you use the paddles. I do really like the synthetic shifter boot and I like the copper stitching on it. When I put it in reverse, the backup camera pops up. You can see rear assist braking and parking sensors are on. I can wash the backup camera from inside the vehicle. It's great in our sloppy winters. Fantastic feature. Below that, we still have this plastic on here. Park brake, you pull up to activate it, foot on the brake and push down to deactivate it. Blank switch, that's for a 360 camera in Japan. Heated seats, high and low for both the driver and passenger. Now, they, I'm not sure why they'd opted to leave the physical switches, but I like the physical switches. If you leave those turned on and use the remote start from your phone, it will turn on your heated seats. Behind that, offset cup holders. They both have drink razors in them. We do also have a 12 volt power point. And behind that, we have a little bit of storage. And in the armrest, there is no power points, but you have a place to run cords through. And this is a soft touch armrest with the copper stitching. It all really ties together. It is a very comfortable car. Up top, we have SOS and roadside slash concierge service. That's part of the three-year travel to the connected services, connected services, sorry, that you get with most new Subarus. We've got map lights, sunroof controls, tilt and slide. And it is a, just a manual shade, but you end up with the regular size sunroof. And it generally more than adequate for most people. On the sun visors, 
We do have sunglass holder. You put the arms through that. It'll hold that. I put cards in mine. Vanity mirror. This folds out and you can slide it if the sun's directly at your left or right. And uh, I didn't show you guys under the hood, so I'll do that next. So here we are at the front of the Crosstrek. I've popped the hood facing the front of the car. Hand goes into the right hand side of the Subaru logo, facing down, move from right to left. That is the lever you're supposed to move. This is the 2.5 liter four cylinder boxer engine producing 182 horsepower in the Crosstrek Wilderness. Looks very similar to every other 2.5 liter because it's practically the same. Everything in yellow is what the average consumer is going to touch over the course of their ownership. We've got brake fluid. We have washer fluid. We have oil. The oil filter's up top. We've got coolant. We have the dipstick. We've got easy access to our air filter if we have to change that. It's all easily accessible. And of course, easy access to the battery. It's not tucked away somewhere funny. And then to close it, I just like to drop it from about eight inches. I don't like to push down on it. It feels like I am going to dent it. So I will give you guys a another quick walk around of the cross track wilderness in the sun blaze. I am a huge fan of this color. I think it really, really stands out in the sun. It's less of a burnt orange directly in the sun. There's a lot of pearl in there. Great rear end. And of course, my favorite view of the Crosstrek is the rear three-quarter view. I think it's absolutely fantastic. I think they did a great job with this redesign and how they made the wilderness stand out. So thank you for watching my quick walkthrough of the 2024 Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness in the Sun Blaze Pearl. I'm Tyson, the Subaru Specialist from Subaru Prince George. If you guys have any questions about this vehicle behind me, any of the tech in it, or anything in the Subaru lineup, please put it in the comments below. I'm always looking to answer you guys' questions and make new content for you in the future. So again, thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.